Christmas is a spirit. You hear people talk of the Christmas spirit. Well, the Christmas spirit, literal meaning of spirit is the non-physical part of a person, which is the seat of emotions and character or the soul. And the soul is love. Christmas means love. It's a time when the love of God and our fellow man should rise above all the hatred and the bitterness. And we have had enough of that in 2020. We go through our lives all year long. And I believe Christmas is like our yearly calendar reminder that we should love each other. We should honor each other. We should be together as a group, as humanity. Let somebody in line in front of you at the grocery store. Let a car emerge in front of you on the highway. Show that love. Show that God's spirit. Let it shine through. I mean, we need to remind ourselves that we're actually strangers here on earth. This is not our true home. Our true home is in heaven, is in spirit, is with like-minded beings of love and light. It's been said that we're spiritual beings going on a human journey. And we are. We are spiritual beings made of light, moon beings, and stardust. We are of the universe. We celebrate Christmas, Christmas as the birth of Christ. Christmas actually means the mass for Christ. And we are, after all, children of God, which makes us part of Christ and the Christ consciousness. So as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, knowing that he grew into such a being of light and love, his love light shone everywhere he went with the people he talked to, the, the surroundings that he came in contact with. Everybody sensed this love and light. They wanted to be with him, around him, close to him, touch him. We need to let our lights shine through. Like Betty says, let your overabundance of love and energy flow outward, touch the people around you, the animals around you, the, the very trees and bushes. Be out there, overshine the darkness, take the darkness away. Keep your love going and flowing strongly. And Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let the divine speak in us, through us, so that people don't have any questions about us. If somebody says something to the negative, somebody beside them could say, oh, that's not them. I know them. You wouldn't get that from them. They are pure love and light. Take this Christmas spirit, this Christmas joy and love, spread it out with you all year long. Go against the darkness. Just turn up the brightness on your light and let it shine, and let the love be. And always, always, in the Christ light, and in the Christ name, namaste. And now I turn the next part of the service over to Reverend Sharon Flynn. Thank you. Thank you, Sherilyn. We all have a theme going on here. <laughs> <laughs> So good morning and Merry Christmas to all. And I'd like to start with prayer. So let us pray. Father, Mother, God, Heavenly Creator, I ask that the connection I make to my higher self, to my angels, to my guides come forth to be a guidance for others that I share this wisdom that comes from the divine through me to others. We ask this in Christ's light and Christ's name. Amen. So I'd like to start um, with a verse from the Bible, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, and then verse 9 through 11. Now, when Jesus 
was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, <laughs> let me restart over again. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, asking where he was, who, who he was to be born of the king of Jews. For when they have seen this, his star in the east and it's rising and they have come to worship him. The Herod, the king, heard this and he was disturbed and troubled as well as the whole of Jerusalem with him. So he called together all the key chief priests and learned men and, and others to ask where Christ was to be born. And they replied to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it was written by the prophet. Verse nine through 11. And when the wise men listened to the king, they went their way. Behold the star which has been seen in the east and its rising went before them until it came and stood over a place where the young child was. When they saw the star, they were thrilled with ecstatic joy. And then going on to the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasure bags, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So this is the Christmas season. And I always find Christmas season is a time of reflection of our past with family and friends and many, many parts of us that we experienced Christmas since we were young to, to now. Well, this is certainly a different Christmas <laughs> and much change has occurred here in 2020. As Betty said, it's been a, the past nine months, we each have gone through a huge change and it's, it's pretty dramatic actually. The world seems more filled with uncertainty and chaos and the world seems to be filled with many, many emotions of the old past and memories of the past, as well as that we've changed pretty dramatically as individuals. Also, when I think of Christmas, I'm, my Christmas always starts at um, solstice, winter solstice. It's, it's really my Christmas, and that is the highlight of my season. So we're having a very, very special uh, winter solstice this year, and the star of Bethlehem will be in, in the sky. I've, I've heard that it was from 1623 was the last time that we had the star of Bethlehem, but I also saw it in other books that it had been 800 years since it actually had had this, the, the great conjunction in the zero degree um, in the sky. So this celestial event is also in Aquarius. So um, it is the beginning of a spiritual awakening. And it's certainly going to move us to a higher sense of uh, vibration, as Betty said, and it's going to bring us to connect to that higher consciousness. And it's certainly going to change um, lots of people. So with so much change going on and taking place, I find that a lot of people can lose their sense of self. Um, when people are placed in solitary confinement, I find that it's, 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 that's what we're, we've had that experience of trying to find ourselves in this solitary existence. Um, even though we're together remotely, people's energy really does have an impact on others. So, you know, and our way of life has been completely changed. You know, our gatherings are together, but separate. And there is our social structure of connecting is much different too. So with that, with all this change that is taking place within us, there has been lots of people with crisis, mental crisis, um, depression, and it's affecting all of us. So one of the things as far as a gift that I would like to help you understand is that we can release the old past and recreate. It's like we're, we're giving this opportunity to recreate ourselves. 
And on a personal note, um, last week, um, I could really feel a lot of this energy like inundating us. And I woke up feeling very depressed. Um, I felt lost and hopeless. And it felt like much of my light was very dimmed in some sort of darkness. And that's been a long time since I've had that experience. So if I'm having that experience, I, I'm, I'm bringing it up so that we can all know that we're all having somewhat of that kind of experience of your light being dimmed for a moment or that feeling of being, um, you know, just out of sorts and out of place. And what I realized is that there had been so much change taking place in my life, in my work, in my home, that I realized that I had forgotten who I was. And, and there is nothing in this world that actually feels the same. So it's like the world's turned upside down. You know, it's like we're going through this huge shift. And this huge shift is that we aren't where we used to be. We're in the middle of this change and we're not who we're going to become yet. So we're all going through these different levels of this heavy energy. And we're also going through an expansion. So when we feel this heavy energy, it's very easy to get lost in it or think it's us. And it, it will bring up all these emotions and all these fears that are coming in and anger. Um, so I believe that this is being utilized, presented to us so that we can understand that because of this change, we have a power within us to connect to the light, to connect to the wisdom, to connect to the guidance of what we need to do for ourselves every day um, to promote this expansion, to know that this is a gift of a major expansion on our soul level. If we didn't have all this energy coming in and we didn't have all this change, I believe that it wouldn't have prompted us to go through this shifting so much. So it's prompting us to examine our lives with scrutiny, to review, to release, and to recreate ourselves at the deepest soul level. It is why we made the choice to come in to this earth right now, as Betty said, but it's also for us to move forward. And one of the best ways to move forward, and this is this little tool that I believe that could help all of us, is to really review our past and to utilize our review of our past to release the things that we don't want to take with us to this new beginning. It's an exciting, exciting time. So if you can really look at this time frame as a new beginning and that what has held us back, what are our resistances, what are all, all the, the, the patterns we, we choose not to have anymore. So let's, you know, and, and let's do this on a daily basis of reviewing the past and releasing. And I'm going to share with you um, some, something that I find very beautiful. Ralph Blum um, wrote the book of runes and the rune to me that gives us the connection to this time frame is, is, a, is a rune that's number 21 and it's the gateway. So if um, we just take a moment and um, I'm kind of just gonna guide you in a very quick little meditation. And so just close your eyes. And I want you to visualize yourself standing before the gateway on a hilltop. Your entire life lies out behind you and below. And before you step through the gateway, pause and reflect and review the past Look at all the things that you've learned, the learning and the joys that have been in your life, the victories, the sorrows, and everything it took to bring you here. Take the moment and many moments to come and to observe it all, bless it all, release it all. For it is in letting go of the past that you reclaim your power. Now step through the gateway and feel the freedom and the love that you can bring into yourself now. So just take a moment and now slowly come back and just open your eyes. <clears throat>
this is our homework that we need to do every day to relinquish the old patterns, the old way of being, our resistances to what is. So we can embrace more light that is within us, starting with, always starting with gratitude. It is when we're in this resistance and refuse to clear our old selves, when we get stuck and we cannot be in love or joy. We must be intentional every day to accept and to live in this love and joy. It will be your compass so you can live in the highest light of wisdom and gratitude. And also know that we are holy, that we are divine, and that we are the light of God. And we're also the creator force that can create and intend to be grateful and thankful for this time of change. And let us remind ourselves to clear out those resistances, to focus on the present moment, and to know with excitement that we're beginning a new time, a new age, a new, new birth, as, as Betty says. And when we can create with this new awareness of an expanded reality, with this we can support the new world through unity and for the community and for friends and family and for ourselves. Know that you are enough, that you are loved, and that you are divine. So I'm going to send the blessings to you and, and may your Christmas season and beyond be filled with joy, be filled with light and be filled with love. And I'm sending blessings to all of you. Thank you very much. And I'd like to invite Reverend Bill Whitley to now share with us his Christmas message and sending all of you blessings. Thank you. Uh, first thing I want to say, it's really interesting being the last person to speak. Because when you're the last person to speak, you get to see how much what everyone before you has already said that you wanted to say. It's just that you're now saying it in a different way and from a different perspective. I particularly, I like the part from the ruins because it tied right in with what I wanted to talk about. And what I want to talk about is the luxury of gratitude. Because gratitude really is a luxury. There are some people who don't feel gratitude and don't know how to feel gratitude. And if you can't feel it and you don't know how to feel it, there's no way to express it. And gratitude is one of the things that helps make us happy when we reflect. And Sharon talked about reflection, and almost all of us have talked about reflection because Christmas is a time of reflection. At Christmas time, whether we do it subconsciously or consciously, we're reflecting. We're reflecting on every Christmas past, every event in our life, and every event that's been taught to us. So we are reflecting about everything. But since we're reflecting with gratitude, so reflecting about everything, it's important that we reflect with gratitude. Reflection with gratitude. That's the thing we want to think about when we think about reflection. And most of the time, I don't think we do that. We, reflection, we reflect on things, but we don't reflect on them with gratitude. Because no matter what we're reflecting on, be it as we choose to label it, good or bad, there's something in it that we can be grateful for. So I tell you this Christmas, be grateful for your reflections. Okay? And, and, and um, as an example, I'll say, whether you sleep on a bed of hay in a stable, or you sleep on satin sheets in a house of wealth, be grateful. I am sure that the child that this season represents who slept on hay in a stable, that his parents were grateful for what shelter they had and what lump they had. Because he was a child in a barn. And I can remember being a child in the barn when I was little, all right? Because when I was little, we played in the barns. We lived on a farm. 
I grew up on a farm. So I know what playing in the hay feels like. I know what sleeping in the hay feels like. As boys, we used to dig tunnels under the hay in the barn and crawl under it to get warm. It could be 20 degrees outside. We get in the barn and crawl under the hay to get warm and stay under there. Okay. That's a reflection of my life, a reflection at Christmas in my life. I am grateful for that. And I'm sure as a child that I was grateful for the warmth. The only thing is, in many instances, we don't see that as it's happening. We don't express our gratitude for it, but it's still there. And also, I remember as a reflection, we're sharing, I'm sharing reflections now. So the only way I can share reflections personally is to share personal reflections about myself. And I remember growing up in my grandmother's house. And in my grandmother's house, my grandfather also, but my grandmother is the one that I, I reflect on the most when I reflect back on my childhood around Christmas. And grandmother's house was heated by wood stoves. So there was a kitchen wood stove in the kitchen for cooking on. And there was another wood stove in what was called the living room. But the dining room, which was adjacent to the kitchen, didn't have any heat. And none of the other rooms in the house had heat. And the rooms upstairs where everybody slept had no heat. So in that house, if you weren't in the kitchen or you weren't in the living room, you were cold in the winter. All right? So when grandmother was making biscuits or cooking or whatever, she had one of these big wooden stoves that had all the ovens on it. They had two or three ovens and places for keeping the food warm. But the unusual thing about that stove to me was behind it, there was this big area where you could store wood. And I was little enough to crawl back there. And I'd crawl back there behind that wood, and that was the warmest place in the house. So I was grateful for that warmth. So it doesn't have to be something large to be grateful for. It doesn't have to be something large to reflect upon. You can be large, uh, grateful for anything, large or small. Just be grateful. The fact that you're exhibiting gratitude, that you're exhibiting gratefulness for what you have, no matter what it is, is what brings happiness into your life, is actually what brings Christmas into your life. The expression of Christmas is actually the expression of gratitude. And I remember also when I was little, we were very poor. I was going to say we were very poor. We were probably very, very poor. Okay. My father worked as a farm hand. And, and that's all he did when I was real little. So we, we didn't have a home per se other than we lived in a tenant house. If any some folks here might know and understand what a tenant house is, that was where the farm hand got to live in for free as long as he worked on the farm. Okay. And when I thought back on that and think back on that tenant house, and we didn't have much of nothing when we lived in that house. But one of my memories was when the ladies from the church would come to our house on Christmas and bring gifts. And sometimes those gifts that the ladies from the church brought were actually the most of the gifts that we got other than food and maybe a piece of hand-me-down clothing. So we were grateful for those ladies that came from the church. And I'm grateful now for the warmth then and the memory now. And those reflections on those memories Combined with gratitude, equal happy. When you sit and reflect on the memories of your life, and you combine those memories with gratitude, they equal happy. So, if you want to be happy this Christmas, do not ignore your reflections. And I say that because some people want to ignore their past at Christmas. They don't want to remember. They want to not reflect on things that occurred in their life. I'm telling you, reflect on them. But reflect on them and allow yourself to feel them. But do that 
and combine them with a genuine feeling of gratitude. It does not matter when, where, how wealthy, or how poor. There is always something to be grateful for. And if you cannot think of anything to be grateful for, simply be grateful for your reflections. Happy reflections and Merry Christmas to everyone. We give thanks from deep in our hearts for the privilege of being able to join together today to participate in this workshop service, this special Christmas service, and to have the ability to do so. We look in our hearts and feel the love and light in our hearts and send forth healing through this Christmas season to those who are in need. For whatever the reason or whatever the healing, may their hearts be open and receptive to the light and the love that is ready to enter in simply by their expression of will. And be with us in our own hearts as we go through this Christmas season. Help us keep our own hearts open to love and light so that we may feel the compassion of this season, the love of this season, and the gratitude for all that we have now and have had. And may those feelings fill us with love and light that we in turn share with others. In the name of Lord, we pray. Amen. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fears. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>